In this video, we're going to be discussing whether engine braking or using your Jake brakes wastes fuel. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing whether engine braking wastes fuel or using your Jake brakes wastes fuel. Now, I'm gonna skip right to the answer to this question in case you were just watching the video to find out if it's a yes or no answer, and the answer is no. Engine braking or using your Jakes does not waste fuel. It almost uses no fuel, and the rest of the video we're gonna be explaining why that is and the principles behind it, okay? Well, if you're unfamiliar with what engine braking or Jake brakes are, it's basically using the engine to slow down the vehicle opposed to using your service brakes. Now, Normally your engine's there to accelerate the vehicle, but if you remove throttle input so you're not adding fuel to the combustion cycle, the engine's actually kind of a load on the vehicle. It's gonna slow it down as long as you're not in neutral because it takes a lot of energy to rotate the pistons in the cylinder. And for two reasons, there's slight friction between the cylinder and the piston itself, but more importantly, at least on a gasoline engine, there's a lot of vacuum produced. So as the piston travels down in the cylinder, it is drawing a heavy vacuum. And that heavy vacuum takes a lot of energy to pull the piston down. So that energy is being pulled from the wheels, basically. So it's slowing down your vehicle. That's the principles of engine braking, at least. Now, people, here's where people think, hey, it might be wasting fuel to use the engine to slow down the vehicle. When you push your throttle pedal, or gas pedal, it increases the engine RPMs, and it also burns more fuel. So people think, okay, increase in engine RPM means more fuel burned. Not necessarily. It's actually an increase in the throttle input or the amount of air flowed in a gas engine that increases the fuel burn rate. Just RPMs alone do not increase the fuel burn rate, and we're gonna be discussing that in this video. Okay, so first we're gonna discuss the specifics of the gasoline engine braking principles. Now, this is a four-stroke engine. Pretty much all gasoline engines are, unless it's a weed whacker or something. So we have four strokes. We have an intake, a compression, a power, and ex an exhaust stroke. Now, you may think that it's on the power stroke that it's generating a lot of vacuum. Well, that's not true because there's already a lot of air in that cylinder after the intake stroke. And on the power, on the compression stroke, it's compressing all that air. Now, if no explosion happens at the top of the stroke, you still have all that air trapped in there. So it's the air pressure is going to increase as the piston travels up, and then it's going to help it force it back down. It's just stored energy. So it's really the intake stroke. Now, with the intake valve open, it's not going to generate a lot of vacuum unless there's a restriction before the intake valve. Now this is where you get into the specifics of a gas engine. Now what do I mean by that? Before the intake valve on a gas engine, you're gonna have some sort of restriction. Now what do I mean by a restriction? You have either a carburetor on a very old engine, or you have some sort of air limiting valve. What do I mean by this? Like a throttle body, some sort of flap or butterfly that's gonna control the amount of air. And the reason for this is gas engines operate on the principle of how much air is coming into the engine? Let's add enough fuel that we stay pretty much around 14 to 1 on fuel to air volume. So if you can close that valve, your throttle body or your carburetor, and then have the intake valve open, there's no air coming in, right? Because the intake valve's open, it's trying to pull air in, but there's no air to come through that valve. So that's where the vacuum is getting generated. Now that's the big difference because on a diesel, they don't have a carburetor, they don't have a throttle body, they don't have any of that. So let's discuss the specifics of a diesel. Okay, now on a diesel, it's a lot different. There's still a piston, it's still a four stroke system or four stroke cycle system, unless it's a Detroit two stroke. But the big difference is there's no throttle restrictor. There's no air restrictor. You don't have a carburetor. You don't have a throttle body. Now, before you email me or comment, oh, well, my new Freightliner with the Cummins, blah, 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 has a, a throttling valve. That's 
Yes, I know there's some engines that are diesels and they have some sort of throttling system. Mostly that's for EGR though. It's not for the operation of the engine all the time. We're talking about the majority of diesels here. So when your intake valve's open, piston's coming down, you need a restriction before the intake valve to create vacuum, right? Diesels don't have that because diesels pretty much always run lean. They get as much air as they can and then they limit your explosion power, the combustion cycle, by how much fuel they add. So always have more air than they need, limit the amount of fuel. Different than a gas engine. Also, a lot of the new diesels are turbocharged. So they not only are not pulling a vacuum almost ever, they're getting forced air in. So engine braking on those is much, much, much less efficient than on a gas engine. So they need a way to slow the engine down, especially on a diesel, because usually they're used for hauling. They're heavier vehicles, buses, trucks with trailers, RVs. These are very heavy vehicles. There's got to be a way to slow that engine down to save your brakes. So a very smart engineer designed the Jacobs Jake brake system. So what is that? Well, I've got a video describing it in a lot of detail, but basically it allows the normal combustion process to happen with no fuel, of course, added. So we have your intake charge. We have your compression. Now, remember I said before, the cylinder is full of air. It is then compressed. Now, when that's compressed, there's a lot of pressure stored up on the top of the compression stroke. Now, normally, if you're accelerating, it's going to add fuel and it's going to ignite and it's going to help force your piston down. But when you're going down a hill and your jakes are on, all that pressure is getting built up. Well, what a jake does is it opens the exhaust valve just a little bit. And what that does is all that pressure that's getting pushed up there, air pressure, is then forced out the exhaust valve. Now, that's why jakes are really loud. That's why there's engine brake limitations, usually hours-wise in residential areas, certain cities, because it's very loud. Because all that compressed air is getting forced out of the exhaust valve when normally it's not. That's why jakes are so loud. So not only do we have all the energy that it took to compress all that air getting released, the exhaust valve now closes again. So you have all that air is released. Now the piston has to travel back down, but the intake and the exhaust valves are closed. So now it's creating a vacuum in that cylinder. So it's, it's twice as good as the engine braking on a gas engine, just because now you're taking two of the four strokes to waste energy, although you're not really wasting it, you're just saving it from your brakes. And what you're doing is you're using that to slow the vehicle down. They work excellently for slowing down the engine speed. So you might be wondering, okay, well, that sounds good, but how, how do I know that it's not actually burning fuel? Well, I did an experiment and I'm gonna show you that experiment. So let's get into that. So we're looking at a live data feed on a cat engine. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is look at the engine speed and then look at the engine load factor. So let's accelerate the engine here. You can see the RPMs are increasing and then I'm gonna let off the throttle. Watch the engine load factor. Drop to zero. So it goes to zero, which means there's no engine load. Now I'm gonna accelerate it again. So watch the RPMs and watch the estimated fuel rate. So we're gonna increase an in RPM so we're revving it up, now I'm gonna let off the throttle again. Watch what the estimated fuel rate goes to. It goes to zero, which means it's not adding any fuel. Now as you can see, trying to, try to get a good spot to put this camera up. up. See our miles per hour here pretty low. We're gonna go down a little hill here, check our RPMs here. We're only in second gear. So I'm gonna let off the throttle. We have engine RPM, we have vehicle speed, we have no throttle as we're going down a hill. And then we'll look at the data log app. Okay. So what we're looking at is a graph of the previous clip I just showed you. The top line is engine speed, the green line. So you can see it was high, it was about 1800 RPM. And then we let off the throttle, but the engine RPM was above 
idle speed, so it was slowly coming down. Look at the other lines, though. The really dark one, the one that's directly above the blue line, is our estimated fuel rate. The second you let off the throttle and you still have above idle speed, it goes to zero. No fuel is being burned as long as the engine is above idle speed and you have no throttle. I hope you enjoyed this video. That is the end of the engine braking portion. Now it's time for a little segment that I like to call... So if you watched my video last week, we had a oil filter that was full of metal, but we haven't determined the cause yet. This is the cause. You can see that the rod bearing on this rod journal has rolled up under the upper rod bearing and it spun a bearing. So at this point, you need to remove the crankshaft and major repair. So pretty bad there. That's some bad destruction. I'm going to show you a few other pictures. We didn't remove any of the other rod bearings or mains at this point, but we could tell it was this one because you can see the heat signature in this rod meaning that it was spinning you can see the bluing usually when you have one rod that's discolored that means that that rod is spun these are the mains they didn't look great for an engine with not many miles on it but none of them had spun so they had protected the block the crankshaft was in bad shape this is the bottom of the oil pan there was a ton of metal in this thing um not looking too good here. Uh, we knew something was up, especially because uh, here is the drain plug that we pulled out of this engine. Uh, it's just nasty, okay? Hope you enjoy the video.